Well, good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from a beautiful place, the second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coach and speaker in the world. I know this is backwards and it's kind of cute, isn't it? So I decided today that I would do something unique and a little bit different. A lot of people have asked me about this, uh, what the idea is behind it. It's not a life story, although that would be kind of a fantastic deal. There's a portion of it that opens up with my story, a poignant scene that I have burned into my memory and will be there forever of having been uh, committed by the court system to the Texas State Hospital, a dead and dying drug addict detoxing um, from coke and being surrounded by others who are going through the same thing and, and just the moments uh, in the darkest part of my life. And uh, this morning I figured I would just read chapter one because people ask me what this is. What is, what is this, a social media book? Is it social media? And it's not a social media book. I got the idea from Jesus. You know, when Jesus taught, he would say, you know, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom of God is like this. So the kingdom is like that. And he spoke that way. And that's really what this book is all about. So I'm just going to read it to you in a way that you can get my tonality and, uh, and understanding. Chapter one, which is, do you see what I see? And I hope you enjoy it as read by the author. You know, my father was the manager of the body shop for one of the busiest car retailers in America for over 30 years. His greatest hobby was restoring and racing Corvettes. My dearest and clearest memories from childhood was my father's intense interest in Corvettes. They were everywhere. We had them all the time. I distinctly remember the thrill I felt as a 10-year-old boy getting up early with him one Saturday morning to go look at a potential purchase. This was the first time I had been invited by him to actually go out and look at a car with him. After a very long drive, we arrived at the man's house. It was a really totally trashy place with a huge yard. The grass looked like it hadn't been cut in ages. There were weeds that were taller than me. The house was in desperate need of maintenance. Even the trees were overgrown. The whole place was just a total wreck. Very unimpressive, I remember this place. We walked with the owner, an older man wearing a white stained tank top, old torn blue jean shorts and worn out flip flops to a really old barn in the very back of the property. We passed mountains of junky cars, tires, wheels and rusting metal contraptions. He slowly opened the creaking barn door, all the while looking down around his feet as if he expected something to run out. The smell of stale air filled with the scent of damp wood, mold, hay, and motor oil instantly flowed out. And there in the very back of the barn, <laughs> behind more junk than I had ever seen, was an old, dusty, torn gray tarp covering a car. Now having seen many, many Corvettes in my short life, I could actually make out the body lines under. Man was I excited. I remember, I was like thrilled because I could see the body lines of the car there. Finally, what we had come to see, the old man grabbed the front of the tarp with both hands and quickly snapped it off in an instant. In that moment, the explosion of dust made the previously invisible rays of sunlight dance with the excitement that I was feeling because there were cracks in the ceiling and so it was like out of a movie, it was really cool because there's all this dust in the air, you can't see anything except these sun rays coming through. As the dust settled, I began to make out the car. There in front of me was one of the ugliest, most jacked up cars I had ever seen in my life. You see, older Corvettes were made out of fiberglass and this one had ripped fiberglass, a missing fender, a broken windshield, broken, um, body, no tires or even wheels, horribly faded paint where you can even see the paint. Every part of it that was metal had been rusted. Grass was even growing up through the floorboards, through the steering wheel, and out of the broken windows. It was basically we had come all this way to find this restored Corvette and, and it was a piece of crap. It was just, it was a piece of junk, just torn up. I, and I, I was, I remember being so freaking bummed when that happened, a worthless piece of junk, beyond help, in shocked disappointment, I turned around quickly, 
so that I could join in with my father's great displeasure at this complete waste of our time. And that's when I saw it. I caught that look in my father's eye. I still remember it perfectly. It was the way that I might look at a stunning black Lamborghini in perfect conditioning underneath the dazzling lights of a showroom floor. I couldn't even say anything because I was so shocked at the look on my father's face. He had a huge grin and a sparkle in his eyes and I knew we were going home with that piece of crap. You see, I was looking what I saw at what I saw in front of me, an old beaten up, run through the ringer, wrecked, stuff missing, ugly, filthy piece of junk. But my father, nope, that's not what he saw. He saw the finished product. In his mind's eye, he saw the car's potential. He saw it completely rebuilt, everything in place, everything perfect, everything looking amazing, you see, because he knew he had the skills, the ability, the experience, and the resources to get it there. Now, my father didn't see a piece of junk. He saw a masterpiece. And every chapter of this book has a little black line right here. And that's the title. And God is a lot like that when he looks at us. You see, we tend to look at ourselves through the eyes of comparison, whether it be comparing ourselves to who we want to be or who we have been, or comparing ourselves to others around us. We all have an image of ourselves. And most of us have some things about ourselves we really don't like. And we really struggle with that. Many times, how we feel about ourselves keeps us from connecting with our Father in Heaven. We can be ashamed, embarrassed, feel alienated, unloved, and quite frankly, just unworthy to be seen or known by an amazing Holy God. You see, friend, but what we don't realize is that our Father is looking upon us as the finished product. He is seeing who and what he created us to be. He is seeing the completed work. He promised that he would carry his work to completion and he does not see us as we see ourselves. He sees the magnificence he created and what we will be when we allow him to mold us. Ask him today to help you see yourself the way he does so you can enjoy your relationship with him and understand this, that he loves you right where you are, just like you are because he sees you as the finished work, complete, beautiful, and a masterpiece. Hope you guys have a great day today.